Exmoor National Park. It's a 267 square mile nature reserve of which 71% is in Somerset and 29% is in Devon which is in the southwest of England. It's home to the Tar Steps and I just have to tell you about them. A possibly prehistoric bridge over the river Baal near Winsford, it is certainly medieval and a much older date back to 1000 BC or beyond seems entirely possible. Some of the individual stones weigh 5 tonne but most of them are between 1 and 2 and were said to have been placed there by the devil himself to win a bet or possibly to sunbathe on. There is an even more elaborate story too but we need to have a little bit more context first. Exmoor is a fascinating Mesolithic part of the UK teeming with history and folklore such as a cryptozoological cat called The Beast of Exmoor. There are many stories surrounding not just the tar steps but literally the whole of Exmoor. We're going to explore what stories we can find and maybe even learn a thing or two. Most importantly, I think we're going to have a bit of fun. Exmoor is loosely defined as an area of hilly open moorland in West Somerset and North Devon in South West England. It really is a unique landscape consisting of moorland, woodland, valleys and farmland, shaped by people and nature over thousands of years. Villages full of character, churches and town halls from centuries ago and a well documented history going back thousands of years. Exmoor is more precisely defined as an area of the former ancient royal hunting forest, also called Exmoor, which was officially surveyed in the early 1800s as 18,810 acres. Now all this is truly enchanting but we are more interested in the national park that it lends its name to, Exmoor National Park. It has a great deal to offer if you're wanting to see some history and nature, especially trees. Many of the trees found within Exmoor National Park are of national or even international importance and they're undoubtedly a vital part of what makes Exmoor special. The genus Sorbus includes a number of closely related white bean species which can be recognised by subtle differences in the size of petals, form of the leaves plus the colour, shape and size of the fruits. Many of these micro species are endemic to small areas of Britain. That is to say they are unknown anywhere else in the world. Exmoor Park was designated as a national park in 1954 and since then it has been a tourist attraction for all kinds of people including many journalists over the years that have taken a keen interest to the park. The Exmoor National Park is primarily an upland area with a dispersed population living mainly in small villages and hamlets. There is evidence of occupation of the area by people from Mesolithic times onwards. In the Neolithic period people started to manage animals and grow crops on farms cleared from woodland rather than act purely as hunters and as gatherers. It's also likely that extraction and smelting of mineral ores to make metal tools, weapons, containers and ornaments started in the late Neolithic and continued into the Bronze and Iron Ages. An earthen ring at Paracombe is believed to be a Neolithic henge dating from 5000 to 4000 BC and another local attraction, Cow Castle, located where Whitewater meets the river Baal, is an Iron Age fort at the top of a conical hill. <laughs> Thank you. 
And finally, we come to the Tar Steps, which, according to Wikipedia, are a prehistoric clapper bridge, we'll come to that in a second, across the River Baal, circa 1000 BC. Made from local grit sandstone slabs weighing up to 5 tonnes apiece, its 17 spans, or 55 metres in length, and set about 1 metre above the river. It is the longest clapper bridge that we know of. The ancient people had built the stone bridges by placing large, flat slabs of stones over piles of stones without mortar or cement to cross narrow streams. These bridges are called clapper bridges and we're going to learn all about them. The name is derived from the Anglo-Saxon word clayaker, which means bridging the stepping stones, suggesting that the first clapper bridges might have been stone slabs laid across tops of existing stepping stones. Most clapper bridges were built during the medieval times, although some of them are much, much older. The etymology of the word is still somewhat contested, but we'll move on. Ancient clapper bridges are found mainly on the moors of the English West Country and in other upland areas of the United Kingdom, including Snowdonia and Anglesey, Cumbria, Derbyshire, Yorkshire, Lancashire and Scotland. They are often made from granite or schist and make big stone slabs that can be supported on stone piers across rivers or just rest on the banks of streams. Although often credited with prehistoric origin, most were erected in medieval times and some even in later centuries. For the more juicy details, there is a local legend that says the steps were first laid by the devil. Obviously the locals at the time weren't too happy to have the devil in their midst, particularly as he wouldn't allow anyone to cross here. Witnesses of the time observed a vicar somewhat bravely deciding to try his luck following a mid-bridge confrontation without much gesticulating and intimidation the devil backed down it was subsequently agreed that anyone could cross unharmed he did however request the right to sunbathe on the stones should he fancy it another story says that the devil constructed the tar steps for a bet some claim with a local giant who maintained that there was no way the devil could build a bridge over the river in a single night the giant did go on to win the bet because the bridge was unfinished due to an immovable and special Yorkshire stone slab. He was too weak to move. A brave lady from Yorkshire was said to have come down to move the stone for the locals and the bridge was subsequently completed. Even strong enough to carry the giant over too. I mean, okay, I maybe made a little bit of that up myself, because it is actually unclear where the story even comes from, but there is a reference to this story in a book from 1869. In R.D. Blackmore's classic romance, Lorna Doon, he refers to, quote, a certain wise woman, well known all over Exmoor by the name of Mother Meldrum, end quote. 
In winter, she lived in the Valley of the Rocks on the north coast of Devon near Linton. But her summer residence was, quote, a pleasant cave facing the cool side of the hill far inland near Hawkridge and close above Tar Steps a wonderful crossing of the River Baal, made, as everybody knows, by Satan for a wager." End quote. In truth, there exists all kind of literature that comes from Exmoor or is about the place as a whole, like Echoes of Exmoor, 1st, 2nd and 3rd series, and some ballad legends of Somerset, plus many, many, many more. In the interest of getting this video wrapped up, however, I will save those for another video. And there you have it, that's pretty much the story of the Tar Steps of Exmoor. You should totally visit sometime if you can and I've left loads and loads of literature in the description if you would like to know a little bit more as there is tons that didn't quite make it into this video. I'm also working on another project and this kind of just popped up because it was so cool and I just had to tell you about it. So it, take this only as an introduction, this is by no means a definitive uh, the definitive collection of what the tar steps are that the main points are most certainly covered in this and you get all of the, the the interesting footnotes but there's certainly more to know about this and you should definitely visit it sometime yourself but anyway anyway thank you so much for watching all the way to the end if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment and you know maybe a like it does let youtube know that we are here and it also helps me get into the recommended of other new people so for anybody that does do that i really appreciate it like truthfully it helps the channel out loads also, reading and replying to your comments really encourages me to keep going and just to get better at it. So, thank you again for that. I've noticed that there was a few comments on the last video and I really appreciate it. But, anyway, come join us. I'm going to stop chatting. Come join us on stream. That's what that's for. Uh, but take care. Thank you for, for listening all the way to the end. Peace!